Hello, it's me again. Probably you already have watched the trailer video of this project. Now it's time to focus more on the installation of Drawing Link. We will look how the process could go by the standard copy and pasting files, but also I would like to present you a more hmm, maybe <laughs> advanced uh, solution which will tackle the problems with different, different Tecla versioning. So, if you are interested, then let's go! Firstly, we have to somehow download the newest version of Drawing Link. So, it can be done by visiting the GitHub website and searching for Grasshopper Tecla. Here it will be the result. Let's construct it. Yeah, that's us. So, let's visit this project and go to the release section. And here you can see all of the versions which has been currently released. Of course, probably you are interested in the latest one. So here, here it is. There is the small section with the changes to the previous version. And what is the most important at this point? Here are the downloadable files which you need. So let's assume that I need a connector for Tecla 2022. So I will just download it and say, yeah, that's the <laughs> open question. Do you trust me enough that you can uh, download this file? And after this, let's just uh, open Rhino. OK, then uh, trigger Grasshopper. And now you have to unblock the downloaded file. So please open the properties of it and click this unblock button. Confirm by clicking OK and then just drag and drop it to the Rhino Grasshopper Canva. And whoa, it is there. So you have installed the drawing link. Thanks. <laughs> but no, 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 wait, wait, wait. There is a lot more related about this. So let's go to the advanced topics. Have you ever wondered why there are so many versions of Grasshopper Tecla Live Link? Almost for every Tecla version, there is the different file to download. And what is the most problematic? To replace the previous version of Link. So please imagine that you are spread across multiple models, that you are currently working on multiple projects. And unfortunately, those projects does not have the common Tecla version. So you are working at Tecla 2020 and Tecla 2022, but also there is the newest version, Tecla 2023, and you have all of them installed on your machine. And you would like to utilize the power of this link in all of them. Unfortunately, now you have to replace the version, for example, Tecla 2022, with the current needed version. So if you are working on the model at Tecla, the newest Tecla 2023, then you have to replace in deep Grasshopper directory the old version of the link with the newest version of the link. Of course, after a few hours when there is an emergency call that something has to be changed in the older model, then you have to reverse this process. And probably you have some hacks, some workarounds, some batch scripting, moving files here and there. But when it will be not just this one file, which I hope that the drawing link will grow up and you also will uh, use it, then manually moving those two files here and there would be quite tedious, I would say. So we have somehow tackled this challenge. And I have one proposition. So let's check how it can be. OK, so let's imagine a little different workflow. You are working in Tecla, whatever version it is. And from this step, you would like to launch the Rhino. And how it can be done? Probably by some macro. So let's assume that you have the macro how it can be named? Maybe, maybe install Grasshopper link. OK, let's trigger this and see what will happen. So at the bottom, we have the information that, oh, it, it was the Grasshopper link uh, 
has been completed and now the rhino has been run and also the grasshopper is run. But the, what is the most important in this imaginary workflow that here you have the current needed link for the model and also for the drawing. So, you know, when you switch the Tecla version, you are just closing this 2022 and running some older one, where you also have this kind of a macro, then you are just running it. In the background, there is some file replacement and launching the Rhino with the currently needed libraries for Tecla. Probably you are thinking, hmm, do I really need this kind of a macro? What benefit does it give to me? And of course, the answer depends. Depends of your typical workflow. If you are working mainly on a single Tecla version and you are changing it once per year, then no, it will maybe just add faster opening of Grasshopper, which can also be done by just typing it on the, on the start menu. But if you are working on a multiple projects, which have different Tecla versions, then this kind of a macro could be beneficial for you. But it's all up to you. Now, I would like to tell you a little about the dependencies, because it's quite crucial to know where is Grasshopper, where is Tecla, and what is inside. Because this, what is inside, is what we would like to create by let's, let, let's construct it community. So uh, I have prepared some, yeah, some, some sketch where we have the grasshopper on the one side and Tecla on the other side. And they are operating on a totally different type of objects. In grasshopper, we have the parametric design with some components, with some input outputs, and you are connecting them by, by wires. And by this connection, you are creating some logic behind some engineering process. In Tecla, we are mainly working on some structural objects, some beams, columns, we have the rebars, and uh, we have also the drawings. So Grasshopper and Tecla is a totally different uh, scale. Yes, they, 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 they could not communicate with each other without any further work. And here, we come to the Tecla Open API. So, Tecla Open API is a set of .NET libraries provided by Trimble, which gives us opportunity to automate, to streamline some workflows in Tecla by writing in uh, C Sharp or uh, now I think that there is the link for Python uh, made by open source community. But you have to remember that not everything is covered by Tecla Open API. So not everything what you can do as a user in Tecla can be automated just for the future. But of course, Tecla Open API is still not the grasshopper components. It's not those input outputs, those wires. It is totally, uh, it is still at uh, a different uh, logical uh, thinking. So we need something more. And this more is what Sebastian has started what he has uh, developed for the model side. And probably you already know the possibilities and, and you are using its superpowers because it can give you a lot when you think in a little different way. So if you think in a more programmatic, more, 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 more parametric way of your modeling, uh, then this link can be very beneficial to your time and costs. But we as a community, we would like to develop the same for the drawing, so we need another kind of a link. So we have two links which are between the Tecla Open API and Grasshopper. And here the problems are coming, because as you know, Tecla is releasing new versions per year, and those versions has new features. So there is the different semantic versioning of them. What is connected? is that the Tecla Open API has also different versions. So if we are heavily relying on the Tecla, Tecla Open API, then we also have to somehow propagate, the, pro, 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 propagate this versioning at our links. How can, it be, how can it be done? 
The first way is what uh, Sebastian has introduced into the modeling and the same what I have taken from, from him. So we are compiling our links per each Tecla version. And this is the answer why at the warehouse there is a lot of downloadable files for different uh, Tecla versions. So each of them probably in the content is the same like, like the other one, but they reference to a different Tecla open API. And this is needed because of the nature of the API itself. It can be mitigated by one trick. So we could use just one version of Grasshopper link and tell the Rhino that in the runtime you have to use different set of Tecla libraries then it was compiled into it. It can be done by uh, changing the app config. So let give me just a moment. Okay, let's go here. Okay, if we go to the folder when the Rhino is installed, there will be the file which is named Rhino exe config. And if we open it, yeah, maybe maybe just with Notepad, then we could add at this runtime section uh, some more, uh, I would say, content. I have it in the clipboard, so I will just paste it. And those new lines are telling that, hey, Rhino, when you'd like to use the Tecla Structures DLL from one of the range of those versions, then please don't use what has been compiled, but use this pointed one. So by this way, we could, you know, just switch before running the Rhino that now we need 2021. And it could be done, but there is one trick. If we would like to save this file, then we will get uh, maybe not very clearly visible information that it can be done without the admin privileges. Because de by default, Rhino is installed in C program files, which in the Windows ecosystem is, you know, very critical directory when where only administrators can modify some files. So if you are working on your personal machine, it would be not a problem for you because probably you are already an, ad an admin. But if you are working in a big company where security is put on a high level, then no, you could not change this file. So I have not used this binding redirects, uh, but it can in a different workflow. So how this macro is changing the Tecla Grasshopper link libraries. So let's check. This macro should be stored in a default uh, directory for Tecla macros. And uh, here is the path. And here is the macro file downloaded from the GitHub. And if we look what is what is inside, then yeah, we will see. The first that there are three configurable uh, strings. And after this, there is some things mainly for the developers. But now I would like to focus at those three uh, strings. So this tool has an ability to be configurable because what does it? It takes files from one directory and depending on the, of the current Tecla version is putting them to another directory. And at the end, it is running the Rhino. So we have to provide some kind of a library for different versions of our uh, links. And uh, it is written in this directory. It, it is configurable. So if you put your libraries in a different place, then no problem. But let's look what is inside the source, I would say. So in the directory pointed by this variable, variable there are different uh, sub-directories which names is related to the Tecla version. So we have the Tecla 2022. What is inside? Inside is the drawing link from the GitHub to this particular Tecla, but also there is the model part downloaded from the, from the warehouse. If we check the others, there is also the drawing link for this, this specific Tecla and the downloaded 
uh, link from the from the, from the uh, for the modeling side. So this path is config configurable. If you don't have uh, this kind of uh, libraries uh, at your C drive, then no problem. Just point uh, this path a little different. The second path is the destination. So where exactly those GHA files should be put? And here I use some typical environment variable. It is the default path where the grasshopper is uh, holding its GHA files, those set of components. So it is by default, by installation. It can be changed, by, but probably you have not it done yet. So this path probably you will not have to change. But if you installed grasshopper in some kind of different way, if you installed Rhino, then you can also uh, correct this path according to your local uh, installation. And the last one is the location of the Rhino. Uh, now I am mainly using Rhino 7, but we don't know what, what, what the future will, uh, will bring. So here you just provide the path where the Rhino exe file is put. It. So the main initialization point for the Rhino. And uh, the big uh, looking the big picture into this, that's all. You have to configure those three paths where mainly in, at your machine this path will be a little different. So you have to somehow uh, get those uh, different versions of drawing link and model link and put them into the different directories. And this structure can be downloaded also from our GitHub. So uh, yeah, maybe here. Let's go. Okay. So if we go to the releases, then you will notice that there is also the Tecla Link GHAS zip. So this zip contains those three main directories, 2021, 2022 and 2023. And it could it could be the skeleton, I would say, for adding them your versions of the model link from the warehouse. So, oh, <laughs> one more thing, uh, this macro which is needed for, for, for going to this workflow is this file. So you have to download it and put it into the location where the Tecla is reading macros for you. Mm, it can be easily find, uh, found. I think that's maybe not in every uh, environment, but in the UK it is here. So the directory browser, and the thing provided by Trimble, and there there is the macros, and there is the information where the macros are read from. So you have to put the downloaded file to one of the modeling uh, directories from uh, this uh, tool. And after restarting of the Tecla, you will have the Grasshopper uh, installation script. So I think that this tool can be used, but please give some feedback, any response. Do you think that it is worth or yeah? Just scrap it and uh, focus more on the drawing uh, link. Okay, so thank you very much. It was quite long, sorry, but yeah, it will be like that because now we are trying to you know work more, provide more benefits to to this link. So see you next time. <laughs>